I'd like to uh, welcome everyone to the Maiden Town Council regular meeting for Tuesday, November the 9th. Uh, invocation and Pledge of Allegiance will be led by me tonight. Uh, everyone, please stand. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us and engage in meaningful decisions for our town. Allow us to grow closer as a group and nurture the bonds of the community. Fill us with your grace, Father, as we make decisions that might affect our citizens. Be with our police officers, firefighters, the town staff, town council, and our wonderful citizens, especially the sick and the ones who have lost loved ones recently. We ask these things in your name. Amen. 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 Everybody face the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America, America and to the republic for which, which it stands, stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For you, the uh, agenda, we need a motion to approve it. I so move. I have a motion. Second. And second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. That motion is carried unanimously. Okay, approval of the regular meeting minutes for <coughs> October 12th, 2021. I'd like your motion the minutes for October the 21 be approved as presented. I have a motion. Second. Second. Yeah. And second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. All opposed say no. That motion is carried unanimous. Before we get to the citizen request and comments, I just want to ask if anyone has would like to speak, if they would come to the podium. Since we've gone live, that uh, that way people out on social media can see who it is that's speaking. And, it helps Wanda when she does her minutes because it's kind of tough for her to get everything. But uh, that's all we ask. So now if anyone would like to speak or... Uh, I'm Samantha Saunders from the Maiden Business Association. A couple updates. Um, we have registered for a flow in the night parade. I is that the 27th, guys, or is it the 26th? Saturday. Whatever. It's a Saturday. Yeah. Okay, so we've registered for a float in that. Um, the Ryan, um, Ryan Schrantz is going to pull the float for us, and we're going to have a generator with drop cords and lights. That's the first update. The second update is Mary Maiden Downtown Christmas is in line and rolling along. The date for that is December the 16th. Um, that is from 5.30 to 8.30. Um, we're going to have Santa, pictures with Santa. Um, some of the churches want to do free hot chocolate. The Maiden Sportsmen, they'll be giving away free um, funnel cakes. Um, we've signed up 21 artisan vendors and six food vendors. Those are people who are selling and and it's in their business that's not free for all maybe earrings or um, candles just an artisan type vendors um, the main performers will be Wayne Taylor and George Gideon um, most of you know Wayne he's a local guy he sings bluegrass and it's going to be holiday music um, George Gideon is he he's most famous for being one of the darlings on the Andy Griffin show. He's a fiddlist. Um, him and Wayne are going to be going at it together. Um, there'll be other entertainment that night from our local civil groups, um, churches that um, the high school should participate. I haven't got word back from them yet. Um, there's going to be a free hayride. 
the um, auto mechanics club from the high school is going to volunteer their rat rod to do rides uh, um, on the back streets of town. Nothing goes on on Main Street. Um, a nice thought, um, Keaton and I decided that it'd be nice if we could take the hay wagon through the cemetery, just make a loop since it's the luminaire service that night, that that might be moving or touching to see that. Um, let's see. I think that's all the updates I have. Do you guys have any questions or things, suggestions mostly? Sam, that's a lot of information. Do you have a flyer on that or a post that's coming out anytime soon? That there is a post being made. I don't think it has all of the information on it yet. It's, it's a work in progress. Okay. And a flyer is being made as well. We okay. meet um, Thursday of this week to continue the planning. So when you get that, could you send it to our, our folks here at Town Hall so they could share it on the website? Of course, the, I'd be glad to. The What's the pages? rain date? The following Monday. It might be the 20th. It is the 20th. Okay. Sam, also, yeah. as far as your entertainment, I would really like to see you uh, invite Kyle Kelly. He is a oh, good musician. Okay. And uh, he can play, I'm certain, in his expertise he could play with Wayne or you know separate or whatever but I would like to see you okay get in touch with him I love that suggestion any other suggestions or um put the word out for your churches and civil organizations that we need entertainers and um um I, I don't want to is is that the right word entertainers performers yeah <clears throat> anything else thank y'all thank you Sam thank you I have a couple comments I want to make. Um, first of all, I want to thank Sam and the Maiden Business Association. Y'all do a phenomenal job with what y'all do. I mean, it, really, we are we are very um, blessed and to have a business association that does as much as you guys do for the community, and I, and I appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, I need to go back to the podium because I thought it was something else. <laughs> Todd might um, touch on this again. You're welcome. We're, we are green, and we, we all have full-time jobs, so it's kind of a, a side thing that we do. Um, we don't get to devote as much time to it as I'd love to. Um, it, it, it could be very time-consuming um, part, you know, to get it done right or to do. We, there's room for improvement. There was a meeting, um, it might have been, it was sometime in October, the resource thing, do you want to, do you want to go into that? I don't even remember the name, where that, that lady yeah, came the, from, the Chamber of Commerce? Yeah, the Chamber of Commerce and the EDC and the uh, Catawba County uh, Community College held a meeting in the community room with the local businesses. Uh, uh, we had a turnout. about uh, employment challenges they're facing what's worked for one what hasn't worked and it was a good discussion I think it lasted about an hour and a half two hours maybe so it was a good discussion and uh, hopefully that's the first of many uh, in, it, in, the community, in the business community can work together to uh, become stronger I have a couple more things <laughs> go for it um, on October 17th, you might remember I mentioned it at the last council meeting, Town of Maiden put together a team for the Hunger Walk um, for Eastern Catawba County. And we had 10 people to register, and I think we had about eight to walk. And we raised about $675 for our team um, that went to the quarter table and each ICM. It was divided between the two of them. So thank you for that. Um, I've also made a recommendation to um, that committee that puts that walk together to consider doing that in different communities each year. It's, it's generally in Newton, but possibly move it. I, I told them Maiden would be happy to, to host it. Um, I think we could get a lot more churches and people involved if we moved it around to different communities. So stay tuned for that. Maybe next year um, it'll be something we'll do in, in our community.
But I was pleased for our first time putting together a team. We, we did pretty well. Um, second thing I wanted to, to point out um, to our police department, they had a, a, a big win here about a month ago, I guess it's been, um, of getting drugs off our street, a, a pretty big drug bust. And, you know, it's not something that we talk about a lot, but those guys do a phenomenal job. And thank you, Tracy, and thank you to, to your group. Um, yeah, I appreciate the words. Uh, I'll carry that message with me because it certainly wasn't me. I'll, I'll make sure they hear me. So, <coughs> um, let's see, what else was here on my list? Oh, I wanted to ask a question again about our last conversation about our COVID grant. Was the money was not going to be available to spring 2022? Is that still the on the... That is still what I've, last I've heard, if you heard any, yeah, so it's still, at this point, still 2022. The spring of 2022. And did did we find out if that's just for utilities or utilities and rent, or was there a At this point in time, it's just for utilities. Um, I think uh, they're looking at the rules and to stretch them out because uh, they're going to have trouble spending the money in the time frame they have if, if they don't open the, the regulations up a little bit. That's that's my concern because I think a lot of the money was designated to be spent by the end of the year and it's not going to even be available by the end of the year. The end of 2024. Some of it I think um, groups have been given, not from our council, but yeah. I know from Newton, December 2021. And the money's not even available. So yet. it was <clears throat> those councils. I can't speak for those councils. Right. We gave them the latitude to follow the guidelines set forth by the federal government. And the federal government says 2024. Okay. So we did not, as a council, put, stipulations on put it. any stipulations on it other and than what the federal government's put on um, just a clarification with, with that, with, with that money that was for utilities, will that be just for the Maiden, Maiden community or be for Catawba County? So, as I understand it, so that pivot, at the current time, the money's only be spent for our customers. In the Maiden area? In the, it has to be a Maiden, either town resident or a Maiden utility customer. Because we do have utilities that go outside of town limits. Right. Uh, however, if you recall, this was done really quick with a lot of vague rules. And right. I think they're finding out that they're going to have to go back and fine tune it a little bit. Yeah. And I that's, guess that's the best way I can put it. And for, will we be the ones fine tuning that or that will come from? Okay. That, that comes from the administrator of the, which at this time will be the federal government. Okay. The Department of Treasury, I believe. Yes. Is it Treasury or Commerce? It's Treasury, correct? Huh? Department of Treasury. Yes. Okay. Uh, and I wouldn't be shocked if that timeline doesn't get pushed out a little bit. Yeah, and that's, that's disappointing because the money's needed now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for those organizations that you know that we were trying to help during the crisis time, and here we are a year further down the road. And I know it's not our fault, but federal government for you, <laughs> I guess. Well, like I said, I think I think the money was was pushed out, and at a at an electrical at an electrical at an electric. Uh, it was pushed out at an electric elected position, you know, like the politicians pushing it out, uh -huh. without staff having written the rules yet at uh -huh. a federal level, okay. and then they dictated the staff to follow state the federal law, and all that's got to coincide. So, I think it was good intentioned. I think it was very poorly executed. Yeah. Okay. I just want to follow up and, and check on that because I know um, E-Tri-CM has asked me about it a couple times. So uh, we should have all the money by May or March. Uh, I believe it's actually May. So we should have all the money by May 
and hopefully we get approval to release the hundred thousand dollars to ETRICM shortly thereafter. And once we release it, then they can spend it, start spending it. The problem I think they're going to have run into is having it all spent in three years for our community alone. Yeah, because and residential bills don't get that high. Home. So, if that would be the case, would would the money have to be sent back, or would it be recommendations to use for? I do not know. You don't know. That. Lots of questions. There's a lot of questions. There's a lot of unanswered yeah. questions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we are we're not as, as in limbo as we once was, but we're still not on solid ground yet. Okay. Um, and then the last thing, I, I know that, you know, we're not going to talk about the fire department tonight, but um, I've had several questions about that over, over the past couple weeks. And as far as, you know, planning construction of our fire department, are, are we pursuing grants? And this may be something Luke can answer better. I don't know. Is pursuing grants related to um, construction? USDA, right? What's yeah, that? we're looking at doing a USDA loan for this project. A loan? Yeah. Okay. There, there are some grants out there. Uh, I feel very strongly that we're going to have a hard time getting them. For one, we're, we're, we're not a, uh, we have a tax base backed. <laughs> As a city, we're not like bandies or probes. Right. Second thing, we we do have a pretty strong financial footing. So I, looking at it, I believe our best option would be the USDA they can, loan. It's a low interest, long term loan for a project like this. Okay. All right. So they'll give you a forty year loan at very low interest rates. All right. And. One of the big questions, I know other council members get this all the time, when are you starting construction? When are you starting construction? I know we don't know that date, but I would like to know if we have a realistic timeline that we could say, oh, it's gonna be 2022 or whatever. Well, I'm not the elected officials, but I've been pretty stand firm that when I was first asked about it, it'd take about five years, which on that time frame would probably be start moving dirt spring of 2023. So, okay. and I don't think that time change has changed. That timeline has changed much since then. Okay. I still think we on we on pace to meet that, to meet that, for me. Now I'm not an elected official, but that kind of falls in the plan that we had as far as funding and all that good stuff. Because the debt service from this bill would roll off, and we can roll that debt service into the next project. Okay. Well, that helps me know. Uh, a better timeline when, when people are asking questions. Um, and then the last thing I had I wanted to say is just for me a thank you to Trina and Ronnie. You have you've been outstanding. You've been a great two people to work with. Um, and I appreciate you and I appreciate what you have done for this community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm done. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, Hey, I got one thing, but it's definitely the first and the last. Um, uh, during election day, we had a, a tremendous turnout at the community center, and uh, it was uh, very nice to see the handicap access with the new sidewalk piece. Yes. Uh, we had lots of uh, senior citizens that came out to vote. Uh, that handicap access uh, worked really well. It's a great addition to our to our community center and our recreation department, and I appreciate the efforts that went in to uh, make that happen. I think it's a, a much better place, and I also uh, commend Trina and Ronnie. Appreciate all your service and all the work that we've done together. That's all I got. Well, as a staff member, thank you, and I can't go much more than that in public. But I will say that project did come in under budget thanks to Brian and Keith. Good. On time and under budget, you can't beat it. <laughs> now, the time limit was getting close, but we met it. We met it. I will not point out that last year we sort of, you know, had a, that little rickety thing just... Hey, it, it, uh, it I worked. know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I'm glad we got it done, though. I'm very glad we got that project done. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to say?
If not, we're going to move right along. I got something. Oh, okay. Sorry. I just want to give a very brief, quick update on the Christmas parade. We have a couple weeks left of registration. Right now, we've got 30, uh, roughly 35 floats, um, most of which are provided by the participant. We have a couple of uh, commercial floats that have been rented. Um, registration will remain open until November 21st. The uh, parade lineup will be put together. We will take late registration after that, um, and we will put those folks towards the back of the uh, Christmas parade. That's all I've got. Thanks, Keith. Thank you, Keith. Anyone else? If not, we're going to go into a public hearing. Zoning Text Amendment UDO update. Well, good evening, Council. Um, this evening before you is an update to our Unified Development Ordinance. Um, it, this is mainly to comply with statutory changes that have taken uh, place at the state. Um, just a little bit of a background on this. The um, statutes that govern county planning and zoning <coughs> procedures and the cities and towns were separate um, uh, statutes um, for a very long time um, but um, they were pretty much the same procedures even though counties and cities do things quite differently um, with with planning and zoning they combined those uh, recently into one statute and then changed some things that have maybe uh, been a little confusing over the years. Um, and that's primarily what has been changed in our code. Um, quite a bit of text was changed, but not really too much of the actual material and what it refers to. So, for instance, um, conditional use permits, um, those are now referred to as special use permits. Um, several municipalities have either referred to those as conditional use or um, alternate or um, something along those lines. Um, so they just kind of condensed the, um, the definition there. Um, this would also um, update some of the terminology and definitions uh, surrounding dwellings, quasi-judicial decisions. Um, this also updates our conflict of interest standards, um, which we put in place at our last meeting as well. Um, and then this also allows us to adopt maps um, through our ordinance. So for instance, every uh, few years, FEMA will update their floodplain <coughs> maps. This allows us to take those in as those maps are updated instead of having to change the code um, each time that happens. Um, and uh, a couple of different procedures uh, surrounding the quasi-judicial decisions. Um, real quickly, we'll go over the review criteria that y'all are familiar with, um, whether or not it's um, consistent with our comprehensive plan um, and the maiden UDO. It is in that it encourages continual updating to meet federal and state law. The next is whether it's uh, consistent with federal and state law. Um, this would be bringing it into uh, consistency. The next is whether or not uh, we can supply the development uh, from this. That's not going to apply here. And the last is whether or not it is beneficial to the public health, safety, and welfare and in the public interest in bringing uh, the existing code into compliance with law would serve that purpose. I'll take any questions at this point. I will point out that uh, Scott has reviewed, uh, has worked with him reviewed this mm -hmm. to make sure that we're on legal funding. Okay. Something else I'd point out to council is I gotta give both of them, especially Blake, a little of that a boy. Um, most cities our size have contracted this out. Blake took this on and did it in house, and then Scott reviewed. So it did save us uh, a quite a bit, bit, quite a nice little chunk of change by him Thank taking you. it on himself. And you've worked on this for almost a year, correct? Yep. Yeah. So. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Blake. Hearings now closed. New business council meeting schedule for 2022. Uh, before you tonight, you have uh, the council meeting schedule. Uh, we always do this at the November meeting. Uh, it is uh, 
it's always the second Tuesday of each month at 6 o'clock. However, if you notice, in August, we will have a conflict, so we moved it to the third Tuesday of that month, which it still is about a month, uh, roughly a month later than the July meeting. So uh, if you do, please make a note of that. The August meeting will be August 16th, uh, the third meeting in August. And this will be posted on the front of the council chambers, as always. But this will need board approval. I make a motion that we accept the council meeting schedule as presented. Chuck. Have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. That motion is carried unanimous. Holiday schedule for 2022. Yes, this is the staff schedule and the dates that the buildings will be closed. We get 11 days. Um, and this is uh, listed per our personnel policy. These are the dates. However, to make it official, we would need board approval. I move that we accept the Town of Maiden 20, 2022 holiday schedule. I have a motion. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. That motion is carried unanimous. Ordinances and resolutions. Have before you ordinance 14-2022 ordinance to amend the maiden code of ordinances unless you have any questions this is what uh, Blake just went over in the public hearing make a motion we approve ordinance 14-2022 have a motion second a second all in favor say aye. aye. All opposed say no. That motion is carried unanimous. Resolution 5-2022, intent to close and abandon an unused street and right away in the town of Maiden. Yes, Blake's gonna go over this, but there's a, uh, we've been requested to close a right away that we do not currently use. And, Correct. Uh, per our, per our public works has looked at it and we don't, ever intend to use it so um, yes yeah, so there is a uh, we've been petitioned to close a uh, 20 foot uh, an unopened and unmaintained right of way um, that extends for about a thousand feet south of uh, Sherwood Drive there um, up above Sherwood Drive you can kind of see the uh, building with the post office um, and it extends uh, south from that point um, yeah, so um, it would follow along those lines. Uh, this would be the resolution to declare the intent. This resolution would set the council meeting in December as the date for the public hearing to make that decision um, on the closure of this. Um, and the way these closures work for the adjoining properties is that once the ordinance is passed, if council chooses to do so, um, essentially, it would split down the middle, um, and each uh, adjoining property owner would get 10 feet of that uh, closed right-of-way. And like Todd said, we do not have any utilities uh, that go down this right-of-way, and uh, we do not really have a use for it um, from a staff's perspective. I got a question, Blake. Yep. So you get, you get five feet, I get 10 feet across the, the yard. Anything that has to be done to the deeds, or will it cause any burden on the homeowners to get the deeds changed financially or anything? I don't believe so. We would have this reported at the Register of Deeds, the ordinance, and um, there would be a plat that gets reported with it um, showing the changes. Um, Scott, unless you've got anything to add with that, I think it's just uh, something that they would see in the title search. Right, five changes, it's automatic. The homeowners don't have to do anything and they each get that extra piece up to the center line of the road that adjoins their property. So just out of curiosity, there's no utilities or no water lines. Why was it? A, do we have any idea why it was a right away to start with? Uh, Mrs. Wilkinson is here, but uh, based on our conversations in the past, I believe it was a cart path that separated portions of the property. But she can speak on that more. Right. Any any um, conflict or comments from anyone there that's for or against it? Um, not currently, um, but this would uh, declare the next meeting to be that public hearing, and we would be putting out signs and sending out letters for that meeting. Very good. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. all I have.
Blake, just so I know exactly yes. where we're at, this is at the post office and, and that, so here's the post office, then that road that, that's between there and that rock home, is that what we're talking about? Um, no, I believe this is on the other side of, uh, of the, so, so the, the post office and uh, Dollar General, the, the, the southern side of that building. Yeah, so you know, sure, sure would. You know where David Holm is? Yes. It's, it's, behind, it's behind, behind his house going south, south towards Lincoln. It's behind my house going south. I didn't even know that was there. Yeah, it's a paper street, so yeah. most people don't. <laughs> That's the way we're close to it. How did I miss that? There's a couple okay. of these in town. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right. So you, we would need a resolution to set the public hearing. Okay. So I, what do I do? Say I if want you to would like to do it, just say I make a motion to approve resolution. Okay, let's do that yeah. and set a public hearing. That that does set it. Okay. I make a motion that we approve resolution five twenty twenty two. Have a motion. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. No. I move we adjourn. You no, I said I. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I move we adjourn. I have a motion. Second. Second. All opposed <coughs> say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. We have. Steve 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 Steve